Hi, Bev, and thank you so much for participating in Tactile Visions Woven. It's fantastic to have you on the exhibition. Um, and so can you introduce yourself to the audience who doesn't know you? Well, thank you for inviting me onto the show. You've got such a beautiful array of artists there, so I'm really excited to see it together. My name is Bev Batko. I am an artist. Obviously, um, I weave, I paint, I work with different mediums. I'm located at the Bag Factory and I'm currently doing my Masters at Bits. Um, you know, I went back to Varsity when I was 47 years old and it's been a big adjustment, a nice life shift and it's, it's fantastic. Being an artist is a second career for me. So that's also just a whole major um, reorientation and a way of looking at the world and it's just been really exciting and interesting and I feel absolutely privileged to be where I am. Yeah. So tell us what, we, what was your first career? My first career was I'm an accountant by training. So I was in finance, corporate finance, looking at structuring and shaping um, the strategy of um, businesses and business sectors, buying and selling companies. Um, I wore a very neat formal business suit <laughs> every single day. So it's a, a radical shift to wearing my dirty artist apron, which is splattered with paint all over it. <laughs> but um, I feel quite um, lucky to have had that career. It's, it's sh um, shown me a way of thinking, and this is now a totally new way of thinking. And I think the two come together in a way that's valuable. Being an artist is being an entrepreneur. So you have to know about marketing and about business and about finance and about you know, even shaping legal agreements and all of that's relevant. Um, and I feel like all those experiences, learning how to deal with people and having the confidence to present, um, you know, all those experiences have been valuable for me. But going back to varsity at this age has been also like a whole radical reshake up of the way that I think and it's been very inspiring and very exciting and yeah, nice to have 23 year old friends um, who are the same age as my children. <laughs> so uh, can you tell us uh, about the works that are specifically on tactile visions world? Um, I think what so you and I had discussed doing quite an experiential um, display of my work and that was great in theory but then in practice what happened is you phoned me one day to say we've just come out of lockdown five we think we might go back into it soon if you want to do this do it like now you know you've got a, you've got a week to get it up get it filmed get it photographed and be done and it was a fantastic like push of adrenaline that kind of just in inspired me to take everything out of our studio. It's two years of work, of weaving, of framed works, unframed work, and to start hanging them in space. And the space I've chosen is the gallery at the bag factory. And um, it was really this playing with a, almost like taking a room as a canvas and seeing how you collage different elements together to fill up that space and to make that space, um, make the, the artworks come alive. And it's an integration between um, the architecture and the artworks. Um, and then I had a whole lot of fun by getting some incredibly um, performance and performative um, lighting in, colored lighting and spotlights and making it into, you know, real drama, um, emphasizing the drama of it. And um, which means that there's shadows that can be played with and the, the works because they're hanging in many cases sway and there's a soft movement and kind of a feeling of objects starting to come alive or have some kind of animation within them, um, which is really interesting. And it's been great for me, the experience of actually putting up the work and hanging it and seeing it um, outside of the studio and starting to function not as precious art objects but as very gritty real kind of like integrated to real life kind of objects but knowing that they've got a huge amount of work behind them because every bead's been hand selected and mm. strung and woven and the the um the slowness of the process of weaving is so incredibly um beautiful but um, time consuming and then to see all of that come together in these works which kind of grow in space and have just got bigger it's been it's been exciting can you can you speak uh, also to to the choice of sort of um everyday uh, materials that you use uh, in your work uh 
and what one would usually have associated with with uh, you know what what has been categorized as as women's craft or women's uh, women's uh, artwork um, and also your ways of working that sort of exposes you know um, uh, you 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 expose you 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 expose the 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 tensions of the work itself the canvassing of the work itself so you never just complete the weft and the warps of the work so you you leave that stranding exposed and and so can you speak to 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 those kinds of decisions that you make as well as the people that you that you work with in your studio as well um What's very important to me is the process of working and the process of making and how the process of making allows you to think through the work. Um, that has a greater interest to me than a finished artwork which gets framed and put on a wall as an object kind of to look at. I'm much more interested in the um, how process of making, processes of thinking mirror real life kind of experiences in a way. And for that reason, it made sense to work with the objects that come out of my life and things that I've got a connection with. So there is a personal narrative kind of element of, around memories of my grandmother and taking old dresses and re-sewing them um, because, you know, that they, they, they had no money at all other than just to use these sec secondhand clothing and they had the pass-me-downs and the hand-me-downs and I was going to the dressmaker who must have been 145 at that stage with this long white in fact it wasn't white it had gone yellow and so like those are my childhood memories that are embedded in me um, and the sense of reusing materials and taking everyday stuff and keeping them as precious you know, I remember ribbon being tied around and wrapped around and neatly um, filed and or placed in drawers. And, you, you know, you'd find all these like precious objects which were hidden away. So, so there's a personal element to, um, to the work and things that resonate with me in my life. And that was important. That just felt like it, the work then feels like it's my work. You mentioned working because weaving was just so slow and time, is so slow and time consuming and um, methodical, it was just taking me forever to actually get to a point where I had something to start seeing what I could do with that something. So I got um, an assistant in to help me and that was great because, you know, there was not only another pair of hands, but another conversation was happening in the studio. And then we started working with beads and the, the process of stringing beads was so unbelievably um, slow that she got somebody to help her. So now we kind of had this little cottage industry happening in the studio. And it was fantastic um, because as I say, like a whole lot of my interactions between different people and different, um, so the one lady, um, is Ndebele and every time she strings the beads they come out with this pattern you know it's like a red two whites an orange three whites a red and and this pattern and my way of working is much more eclectic you know I, I don't like pattern and I don't like structure and I keep on trying to break it so there were all these interesting conversations that happened just in the way that little strings of beads were being strung together so that was great um in terms of leaving the work unfinished and uh, the, the making process, you know, as you were saying, the strands of, of strings hanging there and it, on the weave and partly on the weave, it's important to me to try and disrupt um, categories and to not see these as woven objects, to not see them as art objects, to not see them as sculpture, to not see, to not be able to categorize them in any kind of way. And I think leaving um, the bits of process in the way means that there's an opportunity for much more fluid um, interpretation of what these things are and what the experience of um, either viewing, making, being in contact with these things, objects, woven things are. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Bev, uh, for, for having taken up the challenge <laughs> of, of um, presenting your work in this way because, um, I mean, unfortunately, COVID denied us the opportunity of 
experiencing your work as an installation, um, but even you presenting the work uh, through a video uh, of the installation that you put together under these conditions uh, was is a, is a joy to actually behold. So so thank you very much for taking up that challenge and and for having this conversation with us as well. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation to be on the show and thank you for pushing me to break new boundaries and learn new skills. It's been amazing. Thank you so much, Beth. Great. Thanks, Pauline. Cheers. Bye.